Now on to the speaker of the day. I'm delighted to introduce Dr. J. Charles Jeeva, Principal Scientist, ICSC MFRA as our speaker today. Welcome, sir. Yeah. Dr. Jeeva's uh, professional experience spans over a period of 22 years of research and extension, covering the fields of gender, livelihood, grassroots institutions, and socioeconomic studies in fisheries. Apart from ICR funded projects, he has worked in different externally funded projects of NATP, NAIP, DST, ICSSR, and DSIR. He has also worked in a collaborative project for farm women leadership development with IRRI Philippines. He has also served as a consultant for Marine Products Export Development Authority and Odisha Watership Development Mission. He has published more than 45 research articles in peer reviewed journals. And it's indeed a pleasure having you here. Welcome, sir. And yeah, uh, thank you. The virtual floor is all yours. So good evening to all. Is it audible, Muktaji? Yes, absolutely. Sir. Okay. First, I will share the screen. Then I will. Uh, yeah. Is it visible? Screen in presentation mode. It's not in presentation mode, sir. Oh. Okay. I will go back. One minute. Deepak, can you help out? No, no, one minute. Now, is it okay, Muktaji? Yeah, it's totally fine. Sir. Okay. Uh, once again, good evening to all. Uh, so, this talk is, uh, it will be slightly entirely different from what you were hearing as part of that aquatic and uh, fishery science talks, uh, your usual talks earlier. The top topic is strengthening gender perspectives in fisheries research and extension. Actually, most of your uh, previous talks or usual talks might be on the commodity, that is the fish, other is the technological and scientific advance advancements related to that commodity. But this talk is uh, totally about the people, human beings who are dealing the commodity. That is the talk we are going to do about. That is the gender perspectives in fisheries. That is mostly the male and female. There are women and as well as men's contribution in fisheries, their issues and other things. So it will be different from the usual talk. And uh, whatever the science and technological advancements in fisheries and other field, uh, ultimately it is the grassroots level a farmer or a fisher, either man or female, they, are, they have to implement it in field and also as a human being. And it has to be served also. What are the output also will be served to your human beings, the consumers. So that way also I feel it is a different. But uh, um, anyhow, it will be of, uh, I will try to justify my talk within the time given, uh, maybe 35 to 40 minutes. So I cherish this uh, moment uh, having uh, part of this AF talk uh, platform to share my some ideas. Uh, the sociological perspectives of uh, gender in fisheries and how to strengthen the research uh, perspectives in fisheries research and extension. And also, uh, I am cherish uh, in another way that uh, our talk coincided with uh, our that International Women's Day we were celebrating this week on March 8th. Uh, it was celebrated globally as International Women's Day. And this talk mostly about the issues of women in fisheries and their uh, mainstreaming efforts, uh, strategies for uh, strengthening all these things we will discuss. So that coincidence also, it is a cherishable moment. So I will, uh, before moving forward with my presentation, I have a small video clipping. It's about two minutes. Uh, we will see that one, then uh, we can move further with uh, subsequent discussions and deliberations. So Deepak ji, you will help, I think. So I will stop sharing this slide. So after I'll... the video, again, I will uh, share it. Okay, now, is it fine? Uh, yeah, it will stop by itself. So I want to okay. Just... I'll stop sharing. I am stop sharing. Shall I play it? Yeah, yeah, you can. This afternoon, we're going to do people doing different jobs, and the first job we're going to draw is a firefighter. Well, I don't think you know I've got a phone. This is my bike for me. Michael Firefighter Gary. Firefighter Dad. My high son. He's even a strong. 
Okay, now who would like to meet these people for real? My name is Pam David and I'm a surgeon in the NHS. My name is Lauren and I'm a pilot in the Royal Air Force. My name is Lucy, I'm a firefighter in the London Fire Brigade. Do you want to know how to do an operation? Hope, uh, hope all of you could see the video. No? You could see Mukta ji, it was audible, yes. no? Whatever. Yes, yes. Okay, I, I will come back to my uh, slides. Slide is visible, no, Mukta ji? It's visible, sir. Yeah, yeah. So, this is the, the video uh, which highlights the basic issue of uh, that is a gender stereotype, we call it as a gender stereotype. That is the basic issue for whatever the field, either in farming or agriculture or fishing, whatever it is. We have a preconceived uh, idea or uh, in mind that uh, whatever the field, the first thing comes is a male is in mind. Suppose in this picture, uh, in this video, uh, nursery kids were asked to draw the diagrams of uh, different people as a firefighter or a surgeon or a, uh, whatever uh, in the field. Almost uh, some uh, more uh, majority of the pictures were drawn as a male one. So it is a preconceived idea they were having about any profession, the invisibility of the women in that field. That is what we were trying to highlight from this small video clipping. Uh, they are saying that uh, that type of stereotype is fixed in our mind uh, between the age of five to seven itself. That is the gender stereotype. The invisibility of the contributions of women, whatever the field, in spite of their contributions, we have a fixed image, the male image, the masculine image only comes to the mind. That's what we call it as a gender stereotype. So most of the thing uh, will be our discussion will be going around that issue and uh, related because of the gender series like what issues women are facing in fisheries uh, in um, their daily walks of life as well as in accessing credit or accessing resources, assets, land rights, everything. So this uh, present uh, our talk mostly uh, will be revolving around the issues uh, flogged in this outer layer. Suppose the inner layer, uh, how they are contributing both men and women whatever the field, either farming or the animal husbandry or fisheries, they are uh, doing the level best to feeding the population, increasing population. Our population, we are almost uh, 8 billion in globally as well as 1.5, 1.4 billion in the Indian context. So in spite of the natural challenges such as the resource degradation, climate change, decreasing or, uh, land area, water availability, uh, they are uh, working for feeding us, the feeding the increasing population, both men and women. But uh, there are issues uh, of uh, plaguing for the women is that gender stereotype, as well as the technology development processes. Most of the time it takes into account uh, even a uh, development of a machinery or uh, any technological equipment. Mostly it is taking into account with the male anthropometric measurements. That is what the most of the literature says. As well as the nutrition is a major issue everywhere we will accept. Mm, nutrition or the malnourishment and longer working hours also issue of the women, either in the field of fisheries or agriculture. Then access to resources, we will be discussing further about that, uh, what resources, either land or the credit or the extension services are the critical inputs for that uh, daily walks of life, whatever. Then many places, male migration is happening. That we are seeing that almost 40% male moves out of uh, agriculture and fisheries also 
a temporary or permanent male migration is happening and uh, that the household becomes the de facto women headed households they are taking care of most of the things including repaying the debts or the daily caring of uh, housekeeping as well as uh, for the productive roles also then we are observing declining interest of youth also in many places they want to move out of uh, this uh, farming or fishing profession to some better paid jobs in urban areas or abroad or other things so all these issues uh, is the main focus of our talk today uh, uh, in this uh, aquatic science talk platform so next slide i will show so before proceeding further uh, i will uh, so some slides on the data of women's contribution in agriculture then it be followed by the contribution fisheries also some global uh, figures also we will see what is the extent of contribution of women in agriculture it is believed that women who has given birth to agriculture in most of the literature we have seen and uh, globally they are the uh, 43% of the global workforce in agriculture are women and if you take the national figure it is 65% 65% means i am um, that graph shows uh, out of the economically active women out of the economically active women 65% are in agriculture and around 35% in non agricultural uh, uh, profession and they are the major producers of food uh, no doubt about it and left lag behind men in ownership of land and access to income from land so the ownership of land what way it is going to affect them? it is a major question actually if they don't have access to land or if land title is not in name not in their name most of the fields uh, they fail to get some government schemes as well as that institutional finance uh, this because this serves as a basis uh, the collateral security for getting finance and other things when there is a male migration happening when uh, are the women headed households are there so they find uh, difficulty in accessing benefits and access to resources as well as institutional benefits or government schemes any schemes because of that access to land they go this is also a major issue so uh, this figure shows the women ownership of land uh, globally Uh, suppose it is a two percent in developing countries uh, based on FAO data only projecting, and twenty percent in developed countries. If you take the Indian contents, it is uh, between eleven to twelve percent only is their land ownership for uh, women. And again, uh, their contribution they devote almost forty-five to fifty percent of the time in agricultural activities. And this data recently, on the occasion of women in uh, International Women's Day, some newspaper uh, uh, clippings I took uh, that we were reading through that. we could see that nss nso that is the national sample size organization data we could see uh, that average women in india how much time they spent in their domestic work they are saying almost uh, some about 20% of the time compared to men only it is 2.5% that is what project which is equal to almost 4 hours in a day this is i am telling about their contribution to domestic work apart from their uh, uh, community roles or as well as the as a breadwinner also they may be playing uh, so most of the time and uh, as a domestic role four hours in a day they are spending and uh, it, the study also has that uh, data also so, uh, says that as the, uh, there is a inverse relationship between the age as well as the time spent in household uh, chores suppose uh, after 60 years of age women may reduce uh, means they get the opportunity or something to reduce their contribution towards or take uh, lesser from uh, household chores to take but in the case of men it is saying direct relationship means when the age increases uh, they try to contribute more for the household chores maybe after the retirement they will be helping for the household activities like that this is our own data we could interesting data you could see from that uh, press clippings are the it is based on the nso survey of 19 and uh, as we already mentioned that rural households are women headed like that it may be de facto women sometimes uh, due to the migrations long term migration of uh, male it may be become women headed or due to the absence of a male member due to natural death or uh, Uh, or many other reasons uh, women headed households are also increasing it is about uh, 12% uh, presently because this data shows uh, okay, taking into uh, account the agricultural thing male migration is happening at the rate of 40% men want to quit farming this most of the seminars and uh, workshops we have discussed about this the disenchantment of uh, youth also in farming and as well as allied sectors agriculture and allied, allied sectors like uh, animal husbandry and fisheries and uh, there is a gender role transformation also taking place in agriculture and fisheries because of these reasons and other thing women are taking lead and uh, but their visibility is poor here we uh, are projecting some uh, workforce in uh, fisheries the women's workforce how much it is there some uh, scattered information uh, from uh, globally of uh, different countries is uh, took from that uh, gaf platform that is gender and uh, aquaculture uh, 
gender gender in aquaculture and fisheries platform we took some data uh, by seeing that one uh, they are saying globally it is 40% of the workforce in fisheries women's workforce is 40 46% if you go through different countries or continent cities uh, suppose if european union in aquaculture employment they are 29% and again it in split and showing it is suppose selfish farming 27% uh, this uh, percentage may not add up to 100 units it's out of the contribution or out of the workforce in selfish are about 27% are given that is what i, I uh, conclude mariculture it is 24% and freshwater farming 29% suppose uh, in the case of france it is 35% spain portugal and uh, different figures uh, global figures scattered figures have been given about the involvement of women as a workforce in fisheries and aquaculture if you come to Asia, it is uh, in Japan, it is 51% of the uh, workforce in mariculture and 31% uh, in freshwater aquaculture. And uh, for Malaysia, it is that 10%. This is only about the aquaculture workforce. And Sri Lanka, you could see 30% involved in ornamental fish breeding and other related field. And uh, South American Caribbean field, this is the percentage Cuba, Jamaica, as well as Panama. And in Africa, uh, they are saying it is 80% of the seaweed farmers are women. Mostly, uh, it is a women-dominated activity there. Uh, coming to the Indian picture, uh, here uh, it is our own uh, CMFRI's uh, survey data only from there. We have taken and projected some figures here from the women's involvement in fisheries in Indian context, where the actual the fisher population sex ratio is uh, 928 women to 1,000 men. That now. Suppose if you see the general census data of 2011, it is uh, almost similar, means 943 women to 1000 male, that is uh, our sex ratio. But in fisheries, slightly less, it is a 928. And in total, that is 70% of 72% of the workforce here, which is uh, suppose it is 57% in seed collection. And we all aware that marketing, it is a women dominated activity, especially the retail marketing, retail or that uh, vending. Mostly it is uh, dominated by women by 74%. And in curing and processing also, they are the major workforce. Sorry. And this, uh, the next point, uh, I was, uh, I happened to see a small video clipping of uh, VOBP, Bay of Bengal program, which was released on the occasion of that uh, International Women's Day. Uh, there I could catch one point that, uh, perhaps this data may be uh, latest one, like that a woman fish vendor travels 20 to 30 kilometers in a day spending about 9 to 12 hours to collect fish from landing centers and fish vending. So this shows what is their contribution or how much time they spend in the, as an income earner or breadwinner, the time they spent as well as the effort they travel. Most of the time travel, they may have to use the public transport like uh, uh, either auto or the other trucks and other things. So this is in general about the involvement of women in fisheries in the Indian context. So with this uh, background, uh, what we are going to see, what why we are talking about gender mainstreaming, or uh, what is the need for uh, discussing about the issues of women in fisheries and other things. It is mainly to uh, fill the gender gap. We say is uh, there is a gap in uh, getting the access to these resources. There is unequal access. That is a, a really accepted a phenomenon. Either it is extension services, or the land and water, or the credit facilities, or critical inputs, or technology and information. Suppose mostly that uh, these points we will be subsequently discussed in the further slides also, extension services, how you know, they have uh, unequal access, as well as credit facilities. The market, I know I have not projected much here in the sense, because in the market sector, we can see at least uh, the almost women's involvement is good or access, but mostly in the level of retail or uh, yeah, head load vendor or in the vending as they have, uh, in the household level, vending only. But in the market also, whether uh, whether they play a major role as auctioneer or a wholesaler or a dealing with export market, that is a question. If you have to, if they have to do that level of marketing, credit and financial assistance also a major thing, which women uh, have a gap to access that one. Most of the time for the day-to-day -day activities in fishing and fish vending, they may have the free credit facilities from the private money lenders or the, we can say uh, private money lenders are known family members, relatives only, maybe helping them with the credit facilities. The access to institutional finance is a question as far as uh, fish, fish vendor, the women in market is concerned. So there is an unequal access. Suppose technology and information, maybe a lot of apps, mobile apps, and other ICT based initiatives are coming up. But how far uh, it is uh, accessible for the women, uh, fisher women, or that was in marketing, whether they could use it most efficiently to get some advisory for their production or increasing productivity as well as in marketing. That is also a question. So these are the gender gap 
uh, in every walks of their life, like uh, access to external services, critical inputs, whatever inputs needed for uh, their uh, daily profession, also an issue. That's what we will discuss further in this. Uh, so but this is the slide which is in continuation of our video clipping we saw. Uh, the, just to explain the invisible face of uh, women. Uh, so in spite of their contribution, maybe their household or the, they will be taking care of animal husbandry, all these things. A passerby, suppose here, a passerby may make a comment that uh, sees a housewife not doing anything like that. So that is the invisible face we were already first in the video, we were seeing as a gender stereotype. Sometimes they are unable to access intangible assets. Intangible assets, maybe they, are, they may be a good source of knowledge. They are having sometimes that they may be having good source of attitude, aspirations, everything they may be also having. But whether they are able to exercise it to achieve in their as a breadwinner or in the family income, whether they are able to influence, whether they, their knowledge percolate to take a decision in the family regarding that any profession other. That is an unable to access the intangible assets. Uh, most of the time that might be suppressed or uh, that is an issue. Women's triple role. Most of the time we say women is having a triple role. Means reproductive role, giving birth to a baby as well as taking care of that one. Then uh, as a breadwinner, income earning, that productive role they have. As well as community role. There's three roles uh, having their time concern. Already we saw in the previous slides, around uh, 9 to 12 hours in the productive activity. And around 4 hours uh, for uh, household uh, chores and other things. So this triple rule, how much a time constraint is giving in spite of that is also an issue for uh, to in the from the point of view of the health and uh, nutrition and other aspects. So poor, sometimes the decision making related to intangible assets you are telling. And the occupational health and safety is also most of the uh, thing, whether they are occupational health and safety in their profession, either in the marketing or in the say, aquaculture uh, worker. Because uh, suppose even we see aquaculture, their involvement, how much percentage you are showing in previous slides. Most of the places, the aquaculture sites may be somewhat remote where uh, whether women can, um, most of the places it is like whether they can go and stay there and do the activity. For men, it may be easy to access that aquaculture sites and do the work and come back. For women, their extra care has to be taken for if it is staying in the bond society area itself, it's okay whether there is a safe house or housing, other facilities or transportation, all these things and with disparity in wage rates also. Disparity in wage rates, we may be very well aware that either the agriculture or fisheries, there is always a disparity in for a comparable or equal roles. So here I can give you a figure, suppose if you see globally from the based on perusal of the literature, I could see that around it, the women are paid 30 to 40 percent less than men for the comparable work. And in the Indian context, if you see, we have seen that uh, Indian, I can say rural and urban. Suppose in the case of rural area, women are paid 60% of what uh, men are paid. And in urban area for urban related works, maybe a construction work or a construction site or something, it is 80% of uh, wages are paid to women what uh, men are getting. Means it is uh, for comparable work, almost uh, equal type of work, the wage rates are disparity. These are some of the issues. And in the previous slide, uh, we was telling a passerby make a comment that women, uh, in spite of their contributions, they may say that uh, their, uh, their face is invisible or they are doing nothing, they are housewife like that. But not only a passerby or that outside person, external person of a community, how women perceive their own uh, contributions, that is a major question. We call it as a gender bias, women's own perception about their contributions. Uh, this uh, small cartoon describes uh, whatever the role they play in a household activity. Uh, why are women not ready to recognize their own contribution, feel free to express what they do? This uh, practically we have seen, or you might have also seen uh, in most of the field level surveys and you go and ask a woman or in a fisher woman or area villages or in the agricultural uh, village and go and ask uh, a farm woman. Most of the time uh, we go for a data collection or survey, mostly we may contact a male head of the family. Sometimes contacting the women, head of a, a woman of a family to collect data is also a question. Unless there is a specific project of women or something, most of the time we may not ask for a socioeconomic data collection also. Most of the sociologists uh, might have uh, faced this one. But when we go and contact a woman in a village, rural village, a fisher village, or uh, asking them what is your contribution, most of the time they may say that, uh, no, no, I am not doing anything. Even family level, they say, I'm not doing anything. Then one by one, we put a question. If you ask him, who is uh, feeding the animals? Then who is taking care of the household? Like who is cooking? Who is bringing water for uh, uh, 
the live stack as well as this one one by one well, yes i am doing doing like that the list will add up so is it their ignorance or reluctance is a, that is also one of the issue ignorance of uh, some women of their own capability and value of their contribution in even in aqua, agriculture and aquaculture or fisheries all fields so this is uh, also depicted in another one small cartoon we could get uh, the role of uh, contribution of women in different activities how they contribute and uh, that is also uh, which is such a type of uh, gender bias or pessimism in women kills their own enthusiasm creativity they want to come up and uh, come up with the ladder or something poor human resource development it may affect lack of spontaneity in the participants and they love to play mostly they love to play sometimes in the, especially from the grassroots level we are telling as a fisher women or a fisher or that aquaculturist in the villages where we are mostly focusing about this talk about so they mostly they love to play a second fiddle to men and this gender bias has skews the socio economic space for them and among women and the culture of functioning in the restricted environment they are accustomed to functioning the restricted environment without the demanding for expanded face in the society also one of the issue we call it as a gender bias all these things so this will cost not only for the women for the men and the society at large that is the issue here and another major one uh, observation we have seen about that uh, migration labor migration it is a uh, it is not only the migration of male sometimes the whole family migration also takes place if you see the migration data in indian migration we have seen mostly it is sometimes a short term migration sometimes as a commuters they go and come back or sometimes as a permanent or long term migrants suppose in indian context if you see more of 42% of the migrants it is called as a long term migrants along with marriage family they go and settle in a different place they have to accustom to a different culture this migrants if you see their nutrition and health status certainly it will be poorer than in the place of origin when they compare to their nutrition status in the place of origin when you compare their status of living or standard of living in the migrated place definitely there it will be very poor as far as women's safety health and nutrition is concerned sometimes as a commuters we saying even that earlier data we were saying women are traveling for 20 to 30 kilometers to an urban landing center wait for uh, collecting fish and marketing sometimes coming uh, same day or next day or they are also can be somewhat a type of commuters also there about 6% so even in the fisheries many areas we have seen in andhra pradesh a whole family migrating in uh, suppose in kakinada area we have seen that shu doni based uh, fisher population mostly a whole family living in a shu type of uh, shaped doni and doing fish or maybe 3 months in a year they will go back to their native place and uh, having the socio cultural activities establish their uh, well being there and uh, we have seen in uh, some other uh, odisha in puri and other areas where migrated fishermen on the set well and uh, doing the fishing activities and maybe three months uh, three months in a year or something coming back to their native place and other so this migration feminization of migration also an issue especially from the nutrition and health point of view of the women as well as their economic contribution to family income also on the issue coming to our focus on the gender research and technology suppose the research aspects uh, because our topic was about strengthening gender in research and extension that is what our perspectives we were thinking about most of the time the gender issues are less covered and studied as a part of research and technology generation mostly it is uh, we, are, uh, we are telling you know, the generation and refinement of production technologies mostly for taking into account the male anthropometric measurement so for machinery suppose from agriculture field i can quote an example if a tractor or a power tiller they mostly take uh, they develop the machinery or something taking into account the male anthropometric measurements how much heart beat other things say muscle this strength uh, all these things whether any machinery or if you if you take a example of a fishing uh, fisheries related any dryer or fish dryer or any machinery to uh, are uh, net mending uh, mechanization has happening in net mending also in net mending yarns and all through mechanized with yarns are made so whether these machineries are taking in account developed uh, taking in account the women anthropometric measurements so that is uh, mostly that uh, we will get a answer as a negative way only it is uh, rare for any research to adopt a gender sensitive approach unless or until that project is specifically for uh, women or something in generally if a project is uh, taken in a large scale it will may fail to adopt the gender sensitive approach so sometimes the data collected also uh, will be a, a skewed data that one means uh, neglecting a particular section that one that uh, data such a research when the findings when it comes from such a calculations 
because these data gender disaggregated data most of the time we fail to get an unbiased gender disaggregated data so that will create a, a cycle of skewed data provides misleading information in the policies because these, based on these data only policies and programs are formulated at a higher level Some, sometimes when there is a not an unbiased data is available that will result in the policy failures and means to address the needs of women in fisheries other thing so there uh, and then the gender uh, aspect is very very important in the research and technology development process and uh, that earlier slide we were telling about the extension system they have unequal access there is a gender gap in access to extension services so this is one fai figure only one uh, they have, we could take it says that uh, female farmers receive only 5% of agriculture exports this is from the global uh, level data it is almost applicable to indian context so 5% of extension services only they are accessible to the women and only 15% of the world's extension agents are women means the extension officials we say uh, only 15% mostly it is the extension system is male dominated and only 10% of total aid for agriculture forestry and fishing goes to women this is about a global figure we are saying so which shows that uh, there is a inadequate women extension fund salaries and uh, socio cultural barriers also suppose a male extension worker how efficiently he could transfer the technical information to a female farmer or a fisher is a uh, question that one most of the time it is happening whether how efficiently it can be done instead of that if a female extension worker to female farmer or fisher it may be still better like so these uh, some extension issues not only if i to take our agricultural system also it is 17% that means if you take uh, we are the, the major uh, agriculture research system uh, in india that is icr if you take the total manpower strength it is 17% are from the women researchers in that icr system that is the data so here uh, that restricted mobility of the female uh, as a farmer as a fisher their lack of uh, micro level extension specific uh, approach and uh, lack of some gender sensitive models suppose we have different extension models the uh, trickle trickle down or the top down uh, top down approach all these things are uh, transfer technology models any specific models uh, to a uh, gender sensitive model gender sensitive means maybe a para level extension worker a para extension worker in a village level to cater to the giving advisory technical advisory to a farm women or fisher women so those things of uh, lack uh, extension services are lacking that's what we were uh, projecting in the previous slide also as uh, uh, access to extension systems and uh, and uh, services so in the nest in the nutshell from the previous uh, slides the discussions from the previous slides of the women issues we want to project a few points or that uh, we can say as a concluding remarks from the previous slides about the gender issues in fisheries the same like gender stereotypes types as well as invisibility we, we have discussed in length with uh, different cartoons and other things then access to resources services resources services including extension services we told what percentage the gap is there and the male migration as well as increase in women headed households how it is affecting the women from accessing government schemes as well as repaying the uh, daily or some debts or something or as well as as a breadwinner then time constraint as a triple role as a reproductive role productive role and community role three roles these time constraint how it affects a women's leisure as well as their productivity health safety and nu uh, nu nutrition issues and participation decision making And these points already we have discussed in the previous slides that there are there are inability to exercise the non tangible assets including their knowledge and skill and the drudge women laborers wage disparity we have seen and the gender gender sensitive models so even as a researcher or a, a student in the fisheries the extension or education uh, they can when they come into the research system think of some better extension models to taking the technical advisory information easily or the, to the reach of the fisher women or the aquaculturist as a fisher their role how best these can percolate also some of the area we have to think of so in the from this already we have discussed that uh, some more gaps to be addressed like the statistics official statistics sometimes the definition of the data collection agencies or they do data collection from the socio economic survey the definition of worker itself sometimes fail to account many of the roles women are playing so most of the time or we can say a household labor work or something it will go fail to be unknown fail to be noticed this is also happening the definition even the national commission on self employed women says that though women do longer hours and contribute substantially to them uh, substantially to family income most of the time the work performed is not coming into account of their uh, data collection process as a worker 
that is the one gap uh, major theory address that was we were highlighting in the previous slides also the major uh, need is the collection of unbiased gender disaggregated data the contribution as well as their role if you could collect and come out with uh, that uh, data will contribute very well for the policy and program formulation to increase their productivity which will ultimately help in achieving sustainability as well as the productivity in of our field of uh, fisheries production and other productivity so with this uh, what challenges uh, suppose uh, other challenges in bringing or mainstreaming them or uh, further empowering them to contribute to increasing fisheries productivity what are the challenges one may be the size heterogeneity and diversity size means that a huge population the heterogeneity some may be uh, edu education level there may be heterogeneity and diversity uh, family income level access to land and other resources level education level suppose some may be of uh, very poor literacy level some may it have might have attained a very good very good as a degree or the education level under the diversity as well as uh, the family income or the sometimes uh, heterogeneity happens with the caste strata also sometimes it is happening sometimes when you conduct any program all these things um, it is not a homogeneous population it is not only for female it is for the male also fisheries if we take it is a heterogeneous population that is some are as a mechanized or more priced some are at a very traditional sector their income level is different some are uh, earning as a big uh, trawler operator's income is maybe different so all these things have some implementation problems when we develop any program there will not be a one solution fit for all may not uh, serve the purpose that implementation Mm, problem is there as well as uh, due to this uh, issue then we have seen about the inconsistent data also which uh, leads to that uh, policy planning and impact assessment it will have its own impact for better policy to address the needs of women this is very very important fact then socio cultural norms sometimes most of the villages when you go and uh, see the socio cultural norms whether permit women to freely express their needs and uh, requirements suppose uh even when you conduct any meeting in a village or something whether women come forward to attend the meeting most of the time if you see any training or a village level stakeholder meeting works of a photo if you see women will be sitting in the last row or something that most of the time we have seen that even i have mostly i have a major experience from the agricultural people because I recently joined in the fisheries institute but the earlier we have seen if you organize a village level meeting to identify the needs and aspirations also mostly they may not come and sit in the chair also that they will be mostly prefer to sit on the floor or sometimes so they may not come to the front also mostly go to the side of that uh, wherever menu meeting venue is organized they will go to a corner or sit as a thing. expressing their thing the socio cultural norm sometimes uh, prevent them uh, that uh, is leading to reduced opportunities for development also then there are other challenges like limited it access we have already seen other mobile apps and other things whether it is in the reach of women to access it to use it in their field the lack of access to resource and cutting edge technologies we have seen the research and technology generation process and ultimately the gender sensitization of uh, policy levels uh, policy planners and the program implementers they have to be adequately gender sensitized they should be adequately gender sensitized not only in the grassroots level also village level also women we were seeing in the first slide women have, what is their perception about their own contribution to that field that is also a gender bias so the sensitization will start from the grassroots level itself that is also one of the issue so here a few suggestive points uh, to address is uh, strengthening their way from subsistence level to commercial level as an agri pruner or as an entrepreneur in the field of fisheries either forest harvest or uh, harvesting and marketing and uh, suppose now women so that shg groups are uh, doing well but uh, apart from microfinancing it can take up as here instead of a move beyond microfinancing to a level of a farmer producer company a fisher producer company we were, we were earlier we were discussing in some forums also that uh, procedures for formulating a fisher producer company fisher fpos very very difficult for a rural women group to organize and uh, start a, a fpo of women fisher women then taking uh, things on a regular monitoring of projects with the gender lens also very very needed that's what we were highlighting in the policy and other contributions but the opportunities are plenty suppose as a researcher we are uh, in that uh, as a researcher as a scientist mostly we are working for attaining uh, or achieving these four sustainable development goals 
in one way or other our work will have been related to there are 17 sustainable development goals all the country uh, developing our countries are try uh, striving to achieve out of that if you see the four are directly related to the area we where we work like uh, no poverty zero hunger the third one is the good health and well being and the 13 that is the climate action we are the, out of the sustainable development we took out this four where we are contributing and in this one the gender equality Uh, is also gender equality also one of the sustainable development given out of the 17 this is the one uh, which is uh, showing the significance of uh, that the concept of gender in any development uh, development goal or the sustainable development goal. so we are out uh, in in achieving every four of this there is a role of gender and our contribution also is there so the opportunities are there and here uh, suppose we can say from uh, the indian context or globally also from 80s the recognition or the understanding of uh, the need for gender mainstreaming has started from uh, we can we can say from 80s suppose here some of the events uh, which were uh, targeting for the women's development so even 1975 it is mostly general about the women uh, even conference of women but coming to fisheries and aquaculture many events started after 1987 80s only here i have projected only a few the initial movements after that uh, it was there were many but uh, the like uh, 1987 that the fao global workshop on women in agriculture was there the national symposium workshop on philippines this is a major one on women in fisheries and asia pacific these are some of the history which gave recognition to understanding women's contribution in fish and fisheries there. and if you take the indian context we can say suppose in india the welfare um, as a welfare state the project started after five year plans only in our uh, country so in this one if you say it was the sixth to five year plan only the development of women has been considered as a separate issue earlier they were providing some welfare services only with other weaker sections or the based on caste wise or some community wise benefits and schemes handicapped sections like that but in the sixth to five year plan it was between the 70s 80s only i was telling you know? so that period only the development of women had been considered as a separate issue then after that there was a good growth or uh, the good recognition for their uh, thinking about that concept of gender and other things in the eighth five year plan there was a strategy for women's development new thrust areas there only they gave special emphasis on women's education the database we were telling about the gender disaggregate data and other issues that was uh, gaining momentum the enumerates of women workers all these things with the five year plan periods so the texans and strategy we were telling already we discussed about that the issues of extension what is unequal access so how best it can be strengthened so it is uh, seeing that if a technology is developed also it has to be customized or refined to the needs of women that can be done suppose a technology is generated by any one institute or the research organization it can be taken by the projects or the institutions working on gender into customize those are modifying the technology to suit the, suit the needs of women for poverty reducing or whether it is women friendly or it is reducing the drudgery of women and increasing their productivity or not those areas technological refinements extension uh, scientists can suggest that uh, what are the needs and there are problems in adapting the technology by form women already developed a technology that uh, what the refinements need to suit the needs of women that can be a major work where extension can play a major role women's needs and constraints priorities we there expanding the sphere of women extension work is required where in these areas and uh, already we discussed about the more number of change agents need for the more number of change agents means extension agents we were telling we were telling only 15% exist which can increase to cater to the needs of uh, fisher women or the fish farmer one one thing is we can have a checklist there already government has notified some checklist also to see any program is gender sensitive or not and there are uh, different checklists according to the programs checklist may be like uh, statements before starting any program to see whether it is women friendly or not we, have, we can have a checklist like the venue where we are conducting a program a training or a stakeholder meeting is whether suitable for a fisher women whether it is according to the time of uh, the meeting or what we conduct whether it is suitable for the women or not that uh, any reading material literature brought out as a part of a capacity building program it is uh, up to the comprehensive level of the fisher women or the fish farmer attending that meeting like that we can see a checklist whether the budget allotted is catering to the needs of them like that we can have a checklist about 30 or 40 statements 
to see a particular program is gender women friendly or not like that that is, that is a, some extension strategies we are thinking for gender mainstream the media and the alternative media sources apart from the regular medias like alternative media sources to reach to the level of uh, rural women in the fisherman villages and the community radio can have a better reach then social media is nowadays playing a major role there we have observed uh, we, in our own projects and that we have implemented during the pandemic period with the help of social media some women groups could market their value order products and fishes with a good brand names that also helped the social media helped a lot in online or alternative marketing way during with uh, during the pandemic we observed we, we ourselves implemented such projects where women successfully marketed their products during this period pandemic period then other uh, suggestive strategies like uh, engendering the value chains as well as supportive marketing same like uh, enam means uh, almost like alternative electronic sources only like that one we are suggesting then uh, suppose we have seen about the extension system as well as uh, the previous needs gender basic data then policy and budgeting it should be gender responsive in the sense a gender based assessment of budgets uh, every process in all levels suppose in your block level or a district level or when that when you coming from top at least uh, one coordinator to see that it is uh, Uh, gender coordinator it is uh, in the scheme of atma the agriculture technology management agency scheme now government has uh, specified at least there should be a one gender level coordinator at a state level but uh, one coordinator at state level whether it can see the programs in a gender lens and if a whole state may be a difficult process that can be at a district or block level to see the policies uh, or the budget allotted for a particular program is adequately gender sensitive or not by enabling such a gender level coordinators at different levels and some more strategies are like uh, any development institutions are uh, making their gender sensitive means adequate sensitization workshop and uh, uh, literatures can bring uh, such a sense sensitization in their proper development document itself at least should be there should be a mention of a gender in the document and the stakeholders how many stakeholders will be one or not and even uh, suppose any program or project in the impact assessment they could see how much impact it has created all the women fisher women or aquaculturist all these things can, can be kept as a one check in that one to see whether that project has achieved that impact on particular women that is one then ultimately we are enabling development managers and planners through this process to achieve gender equity only so this small cartoon could make you understand what is equity and equality we are not aiming to bring equality equality we are trying to achieve through equity e equality means giving equal opportunity to all that is not the thing needed is uh, what needed is some more facilities or more privileges for the needy people that's what in the picture if you see even if you give suppose every for suppose any benefit uh, equal opportunity for different category of people even after getting that they may not able to enjoy or the enjoy the program or scheme suppose for a needy people you give some extra benefit or the benefit like a reservation or something like equt to make them to come to equality that is what uh, we are trying to achieve as far as gender issues is concerned so for the needy and the underprivileged in the policies and programs taking care of their needs by providing some extra opportunities or skill whatever it is to be a gender responsive strategy to bring them into equality we are aiming so these points mostly we have discussed again only it is a repetition of our share recapitulating about uh, recognizing the role as a fisher or farmer or as a agri pruner women's role because we are i could see that uh, during some literature you could see ordinary women extraordinary contributor ordinary women extraordinary contributions like that. they will be doing some extraordinary contributions uh, say uh, in the grassroots level worker also but recognition or visibility is over that one uh, well structured modules for effective transfer technology again coming to that uh, extension strategy only and uh, most of the points we have discussed about the gender mainstreaming in programs and policies building resilience major one they create a database on women's participation yeah, proper database on gender disagreed data and the improvement so moving to the next uh, some uh, because some are uh, i can understand that uh, some of the uh, participants are um, scholars or the students in the field of there is education or something some suggestive areas of research in gender and fisheries it is not the exhaustively this is it is uh, some suggestive areas only like uh, you can make up your studies on access to assets and resources by fish uh, fish fish farmer as the fish those who are fishing industry or the post harvest operations access to extension ad advisory services and their education 
and ICT and women in uh, fisheries. There are almost uh, most of the studies are already happening. This is also a good area for us. And the division of household labor, poverty, especially among the traditional fishers, nutrition and health, the malnourishment and long working hours that can be taken. And uh, other areas like analyzing the policies from gender perspectives, we can take up a study on whatever the government, suppose PMMSY or other government schemes, taking a project and analyzing them from the gender perspectives, so how much, and giving some suggestions, uh, policy suggestions to the government, the brief policy notes that can help the development uh, planners and policy makers. Some, uh, and we can do research on the gender and research analysis methodologies also, some innovative methodologies and new methodologies. Uh, instead of uh, suppose survey based work or uh, uh, some uh, participatory assessment, instead of that, any innovative research and gender analysis methodologies to uh, capture their uh, needs and aspirations. And uh, some indices also, there are women development, human development texts, and many indices are there developed by EFOD, UNDP, and other things. So, customizing those in index to our needs are that to, to suit their local conditions of uh, fishermen or fishermen villages, that can be one area of research. And then vulnerability analysis, socioeconomic vulnerability of women and other areas. And developing a sustainable institutional frameworks for gender mentioning. These are some of the suggestive areas where we can think of doing research in the area of gender and fisheries. So before concluding, another two, three slides uh, is there. Uh, this is what we want to achieve. Gender integration, we means gender integration, we want to mean from three points, reach, benefit, and empower them. So, uh, sorry reach benefit and empower reach by how to reach by including them as either as a producer or as a labor or as a marketing personnel or entrepreneur reach them include them in the development programs and this for this uh, the, the indicator may be a number or proportion of them participating in project activity and benefit them increasing their well-being either uh, by giving food security or income and skilling uh, capacity building and uh, for this the indicator may be a positive or negative outcome indicators, productivity, income assets, and all things. Now, ultimately, we want to achieve empowerment where strengthen the ability of women to make strategic life choices and put the choices into action, means they have to implement also. So for uh, strengthen the ability as a researcher, we can play a major role in empowering, empowering them. So especially with the indicators such as women's decision-making power. We were telling about the, that making their uh, ability to use their intangible uh, assets, that one, it's either knowledge or their, uh, their attitude and other things, decision-making power, it to come into, should come into reality. So this is what the gender integration we want to meet uh, from the reach to empower them. And then the approach also, a paradigm shifting in the approach, eh, from gender accommodative approach to the gender transformative approach, you are saying, either, a, either in the field of agriculture or fisheries, whatever it is, a gender accommodative approach is maybe a, a lower level, means it uh, gives some temporary benefits to them, some uh, like uh, some welfare packages or something, and accepting the existing gender inequalities without trying to address the root causes. From this level, we want to reach a gender transformative approach where the inequalities are addressed at the root causes are addressed. For this, we can give you a small example. Suppose this uh, gender accommodative approach, we can say, like uh, giving a fish, we are say, like our earlier proverbs, you know, giving a fish for feeding them or something. From that to gender transparency, teaching them to fish, that is the thing, with a simple example of our old example. Instead of giving a thing, uh, empowering them with gender transformative approach, even that uh, access to land and other uh, resources will be a part of this uh, transformative approach, which will be taking care of their other needs and uh, aspirations. Finally, before the, this is the last but one slide, the strategic alliance, what is needed, because we were seeing and the extension, what uh, improvements are, what is needed, and research, what is needed, and policy and budgeting, what is needed. And the, finally, there is a strategic alliance of all these three. If it is uh, working in compartments, then again, achieving and that uh, ultimately want we want to achieve gender mainstreaming and empowering them to contribute to the productivity of the sector. So further, so there is a strategic alliances needed between research, development, and policy. Research from evidence-based uh, research, we say, yeah, with uh, adequate, uh, unbiased gender disagree data. Then development extension application practice with uh, innovative extension models and uh, bringing in them into action, as well as uh, increasing the number of extension functionaries to take their EAS, we used to say, extension advisory services to the reach of uh, women in fisheries. 
and policy with the enabling and not only policy and budget and enabling environment for wider application and effectiveness all together a joint learning which with uh, means uh, development uh, it is a part of capacity development part of development so only this is what we try to achieve so finally i will conclude with this slide because our title was on uh, that uh, strengthening the gender perspectives in uh, is is research and extension it has to start from the education itself gender gender education suppose we have our fisheries graduates are coming out from the universities uh, or the deemed universities whatever their curriculum should be having adequate gender sensitization modules in that one that will help a lot in bringing because considering the contribution of the women in the sector so there should be uh, adequate uh, sensitization should be there starting from the education level itself yeah gender and learning modules a gender mainstream curriculum development and uh, not only there even when uh, suppose when the researchers are uh, inducted uh, there uh, they had undergoing a foundation course or induction courses then uh, throughout the career also a lot of in service refresher courses are happening there are also adequate uh, focus on gender and gender sensitization needed and gender sensitive research we have discussed also this one a methodology approach uh, innovative methodology should come for that uh, research analysis uh, data analysis are capturing the data this is the data then for impact assessment for how best it has impacted the re real time or that uh, uh, correct assessment of the exact assessment of the impact of any programs on women's empowerment for that we need a methodology better methodology that is also a gender sensitive research and gender sensitive extension we have seen already that uh, gender balanced team extension team as well as modules innovative modules for empowering them. so all together this can lead to uh, better gender mainstreaming and empowerment women empowerment which can lead to the increased productivity and sustainability of sector so this with this uh, i will stop my presentation so thank you for as already mentioned this might have been uh, slightly different from your usual talk in the not on the fishery subject it's not about the biological subject it is a sociologist perspective perspective uh, my my feeling is that unless that uh, major contributors and their issues in fisheries uh, their um, strategies uh, needed for the empowerment have to be also properly addressed for this this will be a slight eye opener for the participants so thank you very much uh, for the patient listening thank you thank you so much sir for that very interesting and very relevant talk i think mm -hmm. in in today's uh, scenario so um anyone has questions please uh, feel free to ask questions from sir and deepak has been copying our uh, feedback links and social media links on the chat box uh, so please uh, do give us your feedback before leaving the talk so if anyone has any questions please feel free to ask sir There's a comment from Shivaji Argade that he was oh. happy to listen to you after a long time. Oh, Shivaji! <laughs> With Shivaji, only we worked most of the time in my pre is it audible? No? Previous institute. Yes, yes. Even some of the slides we jointly prepared, I think, for a different presentations uh, in various forums we addressed. <laughs> we are, that's what the most of the time I was talking about agriculture because myself, Shivaji, we were working in that central for women in agriculture. So I was trying to relate with uh, fisheries with uh, whatever data available, but issues and uh, strategies needed may be same whether it is uh, fisheries and allied sectors. So thank you, Sivaji, for your participation after a long time and listen to you. Uh, sorry, I could uh, see his comment. Thank you. Sir, the uh, Lawson from Shavad. Yeah, yeah, Lawson. Uh, uh, being on the week where we celebrated our uh, International Women's Day. even uh, this topic also is related to gender issues i expected a, almost a 50% participation from the uh, ladies side but i could see around uh, 30% or so happy at least <laughs> uh, 30% of these uh, listeners are uh, women and uh, nice to hear from you sir uh, regarding this uh, gender thing and one main important thing you told regarding the equity and equality actually instead of equality we needed uh, equity in all of our uh, things uh, what whatever we are working towards this gender issues that's one, one of the main point so thank you for uh, sharing that point uh, in your uh, talk thank you uh, thank you lawson that's what we were we are saying that uh, equity as a means mean to achieve equality that's what we are saying suppose giving something to the underprivileged 
to achieve equality uh, that's what uh, so thanks for your comment mm, that's what Uh, it's not a question, but I just want to add the importance of whatever uh, you said in this talk uh, is um, the gender equality, like uh, or um, uh, the uh, the issue of the gender is not just a, um, um, a Indian or a, a fisheries context. It's all over the world now. Um, most of the uh, uh, international organization when they are funding for a research project. They want the gender equality or gender um, issue to be included uh, predominantly in their research, and yes, I've been seeing this one. Um, so uh, uh, the two of the international project that I'm working with is they want a gender specialist to be uh, in the team, and and that shows the importance of like you know the gender equality in a in any research project, irrespective of like what you're doing. Uh, so so, th so, that, so that's something like you know, a VSA scientists need to uh, look into uh, while we are proposing any propo pro proposal. So thank you. you, you did a really good job in, okay. uh, in explaining. Thank you, sir. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you. That's what I, I was also mentioning there in most of this nowadays, there are any projects, the, they are asking the checklist also sometimes to what extent it is gender sensitive. In the I was asking, I was telling the program how much it will coverage of men or uh, what impact it will create for them, and yeah, uh, yeah. like that okay. uh, those type of issues and that. And uh, yeah, that's what uh, uh, suppose uh, gender as a component suppose it should be in, uh, it should be included in different. Ways. What you said uh, that observation is correct. In, here also we are seeing many projects when it they call for the proposals they are asking these aspects. Rightly said by yeah, you, observed yeah, by yeah. you. Thank you, Mr. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, thank you. And and uh, uh, um, I don't see much of the uh, the males who are working on the on the gender issue. And you are one of the guy that I, I saw. Most of the the gender specialists that I came across is are women. Um, I'm glad to see a, a a male who is working on the gender issue too. Uh, in uh, so so uh, I'm I'm glad to see. <laughs> Anyone else with questions? Okay. Uh, sir, Deepak here. Yeah, yeah, Mr. Deepak. A uh, very good talk, uh, sir. You um, covered like it's in a high level overview about the gender issues. Uh, so, I have three questions. Uh, so I'll slowly get into it. Um, I am a huge fan of working with numbers and data and everything. So, um, and because of that, uh, you know, this is something which I couldn't clearly understand. Uh, so you stressed a couple of times about the getting unbiased uh, gender disaggregated data. Um, so you started with saying, <clears throat> Normally, you get a skewed data or biased or whatever, and it actually goes into the policy as a wrong information. That's, that's what where you started, and then you argued about having good quality data, which is unbiased and dis uh, gender disaggregated data. My first question is: I didn't clearly understood when you say what is uh, what is actually disaggregated data i mean what implications it have well, okay well that's my first question second one in your uh, research in your experience uh, what strategies have you tried to uh, bring unbiased you know gender disaggregated data and my third question is um, out of these strategies, which ones have worked and which didn't, didn't work? So that, that so I guess you got all, all the questions when I asked. So it's just uh, because of my interest in, you know, collecting data and analyzing data. So I'm just interested to know what is your experience in this aspects. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Deepak. Um... First of all, your uh, first question you were asking about uh, what do you uh, what do you mean by gender disaggregated data that unbiased gender disaggregated data? 
and that one what we are meaning is uh, what is the uh, suppose uh, clearly the data of contribution of male and female uh, whatever the field suppose in agriculture if you take example or uh, fisheries also if you take example in different activities suppose in uh, post harvest activity if they are in um, processing plant or something so what is their uh, number it is in the number only exactly what number is involved in the peeling and other uh, suppose other setting packing the and what role they play in that one how much of time they contribute what is the contribution in the name of time as well as the wage rates paid and all these aspects uh, exactly by male as well as female that is what we mean by gender disaggregate data in different fields what is the contributions or what is the role played by them uh, male and female in that how much numbers involved that one whatever uh, field if you are collecting that what we mean as gender disaggregated data means uh, segregating the data by sex only that one a male female contribution and all these so in our area suppose earlier i was telling you know, we were working with the institute called central institute for women in agriculture so mostly it is by questionnaire based survey only we used to collect the, whatever the field we used to go a clear uh, uh, well defined and pre tested questionnaires we, questionnaires we used to go to identify the different roles suppose earlier i was working in agriculture uh, agriculture women in agriculture field i was telling you suppose in uh, field preparations then uh, manuring or uh, of harvesting other different operations we used to list out the activities and uh, what are the roles played by men women and how much of time they contribute this is what the mostly we will try to collect and what is their needs and aspirations also separately what are the needs and concerns of women in that area as well as the needs and uh, concerns of uh, women as well as the uh, perceived suggestions also both by men and women in everything uh, clearly documented sometimes why we are saying unbiased in the sense most of the time when we go for a uh, survey or sometimes in a, any rural survey so when we go and uh, coll started collecting from the data uh, most of the time we, it is the male head of the family try to influence in giving the data yeah, suppose even if we start with the women to collect also sometimes most of the time the male head will try to influence and started giving the data slowly the women withdraw from giving the data we needed though we have listed separately as i was mentioning no the different activities what is the time uh, that's what we were meaning unbiased gender disaggregate data truly from a women if you conduct a survey for 20 minutes most of the time we fail to collect fully with the influence of uh, the male head or the something who try to influence in giving the data so mostly as you said the strategies means we have followed only a questionnaire based survey to collect by sitting with them whenever such influences comes say it is through human rapport and skill per se data collection skill only we used to adjust in the sense there is no any specific strategy or something we i have adopted i don't maybe other extension societies or something would have worked. what we adopt is a, a good rapport building with uh, people with whom we want to have a interview and uh, collecting the data required by avoiding such uh, what we can say unwanted uh, biasness and other things it is a uh, through personal skills only there is no specific strategy or something this is uh, with a questionnaire based survey only you are collecting and uh, try to achieve and we most of the time we didn't uh, fail in the sense we could collect whatever we needed in the data collection process this is in brief about uh, that one uh, Uh, mr deepak and uh, there is no any specific strategy uh, i could uh, tell you for followed by me in our area of research whatever we did with that uh, questionnaire based interview with the pre test schedules and questions like that yeah thanks uh, but, uh, but yeah i understand but uh, so one of the example you said i is the you know even if you start with women the men will come in and take the lead and then the, they are, so that that is something you know that, that that that's the examples i was looking for you know what worked and what didn't work so anything similar you have or, i mean so so that's clearly something that didn't work you know, but but then if you are very conscious you 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 can still uh, get the female responses but then as long as you are aware about you know sometimes the person asking the question could also you know carry it away from from the focus you know so so even that person has to be trained in identifying because in a conversation you can easily get carried off 
in a different pathway. And you you might realize really when you're back to your station and start analyzing that, you know, you, you sometimes missed, oh uh, yes, I, you know, I forgot to actually ask the female. <laughs> yeah. Thanks very much. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yes, Deepak, what you say, rightly, you, you gave another lead for that one only. Sometimes I was telling, this is what we did or, uh, during the collection, if any influences come, we avoided like that. But most of the time, sometimes uh, we alone will not do the data collection. No? Most of the time we go with the uh, field level enumerators, sometimes village level uh, educated youth or something where we use for sometimes the same um, effort they will put to collect the data is somewhat a question that one. Sometimes when we use uh, the enumerators, engage uh, different field level investigators and collect data, uh, as you said, uh, we are afraid that there is a chance of failure also when we, uh, we whether we could. that's what we are mentioning most of the time. The data collection people uh, that the field enumerator or investigator was to be adequately trained and they should also have the same, the same uh, aim or the uh, ultimate agenda what we are aiming. They should also with that aim, they should collect data. Something if they fail, they take it in a lighter sense. Then we fail to get the data. That's why we are saying most of the time when we collect data from a larger sample or a type of a sensor type of thing, then that is a question that uh, how far we are getting the unbiased data. We suppose there's same sincerity and other thing, the data has to be collected. That is a question when the questionnaire based survey. What you rightly pointed out, Deepak. Thank you. Yeah, that, that's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah, thanks. There's a comment from J.K. Shivraman. Fantastic presentation, sir. Very good information is provided. So thank you, Shivraman. <laughs> Anyone else with questions? I think. Actually, Sivaji is not there, I think, because uh, we been. have worked together for most of the things. And uh, it is a joint effort. Uh, and uh, from him also, we learned a lot. And uh, this, uh, we, because he published one book, uh, a good uh, technical bulletin on gender reference manual. Anytime, even now, before this uh, presentation, also I referred the manual because he has given a lot of data there, that one, and the different data sources where we can uh, get uh, information about the gender related information. What are the journals suitable? What are the books suitable? What are the sites you have to see for the thing like that? It has been covered in the book. From that book, also, mostly wherever, before going for any interview or something, wherever, we used to refer that uh, small bulletin, that one. And as I said, most of the slides also we jointly worked for different forums and I think that also could uh, say Sivaji and another one scientist, statistician, Dr. Ananta Sarkar, his contribution, B3 and another one uh, economist, uh, Das, uh, one, uh, Dr. The HK Das. Before, uh, because the previous, because as I said, no, that uh, commodity as well as human being, that uh, even, uh, even in the Indian Council of Agriculture Research, we have 100 institutes, 100 and plus institutes for commodities, starting from mustard, uh, garlic, onion, everything we have committed. But there is a only one institute exclusively for women in agriculture. It is a good thing uh, council has established. We were working together at, in that. There we could have some aspects, land, uh, some gender sensitive aspects and gender sensitive So thank you. Thank you, sir. I think if there are no more questions, we'll wind up for the day. Thank you so much, sir, again, for that very, very interesting talk. And uh, thank you for all those who attended the talk today. And please do uh, give us your feedback. The link is again in the chat box. So thank you and good night, everyone. Thank you, one and all. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity, Muktaji and Pradeep. Sorry, Deepak. Thank, thank you for you. The, uh, sharing my ideas through this uh, aquatic science platform. Thank you. Sorry. So I'm leaving. Huh? Good night. Bye. Bye. Thank you, sir.